Hi everyone. So last week we took a look at the newest text to video AI generator, Pika. And in that video, we also took a brief comparison between Pika and Gen 2. But today I wanted to take a deeper dive and explore the pros and cons of both platforms. As a caveat, Pika is still in beta, but Gen 2 recently announced a unlimited generations subscription plan at $95 a month. So I figured this might be a good time for a head to head to see if you might be interested in signing up for Gen 2's unlimited plan while you wait for Pika's beta access or full public release. Very quick. If you watch the channel a lot, you may have noticed that the shot composition here has slightly changed. That is because of today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. We'll be talking about them a little bit more later on. And given the channel's overall demographics, I think you guys might actually find it pretty interesting. Okay, so before we jump into a full-on head-to-head prompt battle in terms of video generation, uh, let's take a brief moment and take a look at what some of the differences between each platform is. And just to be clear, this is not like a cage match to the death or anything like that, and I'm by no means declaring a winner. This is just taking a look at both of these platforms as they exist today. So beginning with Pika, which is Discord-based, and while they have added a number of generation channels, you will find yourself having to wade through other users' generations as as you are generating yourself. This is something that I actually like about Pika in that you see what a lot of other people are working on and it tends to end up inspiring you. Uh, I've actually run across a number of users at this point now whose work I've actually started to greatly admire. Now, Pika does have a pretty interesting function in which you can hide prompts from the community feed. Uh, this has caused a little bit of controversy. Some of the users are for it and some of the users are against it. And is that Gandalf or Dumbledore there? I think Gandalf, I'm gonna go Gandalf on this one. Conversely, Gen 2 is now web-based, which does create for a cleaner working environment. The various models are laid out very logically. Uh, if we want to generate video, we simply hit the Gen 2 text to video tab. Additionally, if you need to find older outputs, you simply come down to the assets tab and all of your previous video generations are available to you here and privately at that. As opposed to Pika, and because that's Discord based, the way to do that is to actually run a search on your own username and then find you know, your various outputs from there. It's not that big a deal, but you know, obviously the web-based version is much cleaner. Both platforms output at about three to four seconds, although Pika definitely leans harder into that three, though the devs have said that they are going to be increasing that cap to five very soon. Okay, so on that note, let's go take a look at a prompt head-to-head -head shootout. Our first prompt was New York City drone flyby. Pika gave us this, which is actually kind of surprising. I was not expecting this to be the shot. I was kind of expecting that typical sort of Shutterstock stock footage overhead flyby. This was kind of cool because you're sort of between the buildings and it is recognizable as New York with the Empire State Building sort of in the background. Overall, the cohesion, particularly on the left side, is a little bit on the rough side, but I don't know, it's kind of a cool shot though. So let's go check out what Gen 2 has in store. Gen 2 with the same prompt gives us this, which the cohesion is actually much better. Frame rate is obviously a lot smoother. Texture wise, it could use some work here and there, and there actually is a pretty good amount of movement to this. So uh, I actually really like the lens flare happening off to the right as well. Sliding over to our old friend, the businessman in a blue suit walking down a city street gives us uh, this in Pika, which kind of looks like, I don't know, a dude going to a job interview for a job that he is not going to get. Uh, it kind of looks like skinny Jonah Hill there, doesn't he? Uh, meanwhile, over in Gen 2, we get this guy who looks a little more on the animated side. Motion is definitely a little bit off on this. And just overall, he kind of looks like, I think that's the international sort of symbol for like, I don't know where I am right now. Though I will say the frame rate looks really good and it looks very stable as opposed to the sort of grittiness of the Pika version. We've got a few more things to look at, some of which I think actually are a real game changer for Pika. But first, let's turn the camera around and check out our new shot. So this is a picture of the studio from a few months ago, at least when it's relatively clean. The space came together relatively quickly in March of 2020 because, well, you remember. And the thing is that after about three years of sitting in that chair, I started to develop some recurring hip pain. I think I'm preaching to the choir on this one. Anyone that watches this channel, I'm guessing spends a pretty significant amount of time sitting in front of a computer. So when FlexiSpot reached out, I figured, yeah, maybe let's give this standing desk thing a try. I've been using it for about a week now, and I gotta say that hip issue has actually started to recede. 
the desk they sent me is the E7 Pro with a dark bamboo top. And I gotta say, it's pretty handsome. Assembly was remarkably easy. I actually did the entire thing myself. The, you know, obviously they do include a manual. It's only six steps. And to be honest, I only kind of really had to glance at it. Everything just sort of made sense. The motorized legs are pre-wired. So all you're really doing is connecting them to the brain, which is also pre-installed. And it runs via kind of a cat 5 e cable that's also obviously included. Similarly, the control panel is pre-wired and programmable as well. And I can now do cool sort of dolly up shots like this. That's sort of fun, right? Ah. They also have a cable management tray, an under desk drawer, plant power strips are available as well as a monitor arm. Uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take some weights from the other side of the studio, the gym side of the studio that you guys never see. We're probably not gonna be hitting the 350 cap for the desk, but I think it'll give you a good idea of how much weight the desk actually can support. We got a 25 pound kettlebell, 20 pound dumbbell. Luckily today was leg day, so arms are fresh. Another 20 pound dumbbell. We got a 15 here, another 15. And lastly, I'm gonna put two more 12s on here for a total of 114 pounds. So that is a pretty good amount of weight. And as you can see, the desk has no problems with lifting or holding it. It's funny, the motor actually sounds exactly the same as it does under normal circumstances. And I can tell you that if I was doing 114 plus pound squats, I would not be making the same sounds that I normally make. Overall, if you spend a stupid amount of time at your computer, I do recommend taking a look at a FlexiSpot desk. They definitely do have my recommendation. The link is below. Sticking with Gen 2, this is actually an older prompt that I did. It was kind of a Bond inspired one. Uh, the prompt here was cinematic action, spy film, long shot, handsome spy in a tuxedo, walks towards a woman in a black dress, high end bar, warm lighting. Running that same prompt in Pika gave us this, which actually looks very nice as well. It definitely has much more of a modern kind of Bond film look to it. Uh, the background and the lights are a little more blown out than I wanted them necessarily to be. Continuing on with the cinematic looks, this is cinematic film noir, a detective sitting in a private eye office, black and white style by 1940s film. Gen 2 gives us this, which is pretty good. There's a lot of movement in here, which is something that Gen 2 has been criticizing for lacking. Uh, that said, it does the thing where it has a cut sort of in the middle of the three second sequence. Pika took that prompt and did some pretty interesting things with it. Like here's our PI just kind of morphing onto the screen. He kind of slides in like he's uh, like a Jim Carrey character. So both Pika and Gen 2 will do image prompting but the way they handle it is very different. For example, uh, I did go over to Mid Journey and rolled this image up. This is just a woman in a coffee shop, aspect ratio 16.9. Running that as an image reference in Pika with the prompt woman in a coffee shop talking and laughing gets us this video, which is pretty remarkable. You can argue that there's some weird coherency issues happening in the background, but for the most part, that is essentially an animated video of the character that was created in Mid Journey. That same image and prompt in Gen 2 gets us this, which is not the same person. Uh, it definitely has the same sort of vibe and character as the input image, you know, the lights and the interior are very much in the same style. The composition is actually flipped and the character is clearly different. So clearly Gen 2 takes image prompts as inspiration, whereas Pika takes your image prompt and well, it just creates video from. As a follow-up, I went back to Mid Journey and rolled up Old Man playing chess in a park and got this cool granddad. I mean, this dude is aspirational to me. He's still got his full head of hair. He's like playing chess in the park. He's clearly got his game face on. I, yeah, life goal right here. Gen 2 gives us a version of the character that looks like this. It's not bad. It still kind of lacks that sort of cinematic flair to it. He definitely kind of looks like he's in between a realistic character and a Pixar character. But comparatively, the Pika output just looks really fantastic. It has that nice cinematic flair to it. It retains that bouquet in the background with the lights. Um, the movement looks really nice and the character looks really great. Now, a few interesting things to note. The resolution on the Gen 2 footage comes in at 896 by 512, and it runs, surprisingly, at a 
frame rate of 24 frames per second. Whereas the Pika footage comes in at 1024 by 576. But here's the kicker, it's only running at eight frames a second. And that seems to be the case with all Pika footage. Uh, yeah, it's eight frames a second. It's pretty remarkable that it actually looks kind of as smooth as it does. Now, Gen 2 does have frame interpolation and an upscaler built into it, whereas Pika does not. That said, we can take our Pika footage and bring it over to Replicate and run a frame interpolation module on it. This particular module is linked below, but what I did essentially is since we know that the frames are running at eight frames a second, I just put an interpolation factor of three, eight times three being 24, and we ended up getting this out of it. Now, I will say that our interpolated version does kind of have that sort of smooth motion look that you see on TVs when they're set to demo mode in Best Buy, it's something that kind of drives me a little bit insane, but it does look pretty good. I think you could get a really good filmic look out of this if you were to run it through a frame shutter effect or something of the sort. That's something that maybe we can take a look at in a future video. In terms of upscaling, Gen 2 can upscale your image to 1536 by 896. There is no upscaling currently in Pika, but you could always take your footage over to something like topaz.ai and have it upscaled there, although that is paid software. Finally, there's aspect ratios. Uh, Gen 2 is pretty much 16 9 is what you're going to get. Whereas with Pika, you can do 916 or you can even do 21.2 to get that super widescreen look. For example, here's some Indiana Jones in widescreen. I mean, it's kind of cool to see what a fourth Indiana Jones might have looked like because, you know, it's a shame they only made three. What's exciting to me about all of this is that both of these platforms have totally different looks. One of my concerns about AI video was that at some point it would all look a little homogenized, but I think that this is proving that various platforms will have different looks. And I think that gives artists the ability to mix and match and bash them together to create very unexpected results. And on that note, I do thank FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video, and I do thank you for watching. My name is Tim.